Good morning children. It's Thursday today, 14th May 2020. Now today we'll be doing the next chapter of Street Child. I hope everybody is enjoying the book. I have enjoyed planning for the book and I hope children are enjoying doing the activities related to the book. Now let's read ahead. Now the resources that you will need for this lesson are a pen and a sheet of paper. So I'm going to pause the slide so that you can get your pen and your sheet of paper. Now learning intention to explore a character's feelings by writing in role. Success criteria. I can point out ways to persuade the reader. I can use language precisely to get across a point of view. Now write down the learning intention. I'm going to pause the slide so that you can write down your learning intention. Chapter 11. The Spitting Crow. Rosie sat on the floor and rocked Jim until he had sobbed himself to sleep and then she lowered him down and went outside. The old woman stuck out her foot and tried to nudge Jim awake, but he was just too far away for, for her to reach. She spat into the fire instead. Rosie had gone down the yard to a shed that was built out over the river. Foul-smelling water lapped round it. Inside, it was heaped with bits of yarn and tarred robes, but she managed to push those to one end to make a bed of some sorts out of old sacks. She went back into the cottage and filled a tray with whelks and eels that she was going to sell down near the shops and hurried out. She knew that if Jim woke up, he wouldn't wander far. And she also knew she couldn't afford to miss the morning shoppers. Now read the rest of the text very quietly in your mind. Okay, now I'm going to read the end of the chapter. She tucked the sacks round him and crept out of the shed and back to the noisy cottage and Jim lay for a long time listening to the soft lapping of the river against his shed, thinking about the story Rosie had told him and hoping it was true. Okay, so in this, story, in this chapter we came to know that Jim managed to find Rosie again and uh, you know she uh, she cared for him like a mother but unfortunately she herself was dependent on other people so she couldn't keep him uh, along with her so what she did was she um, she made arrangements for him to stay in a shed next to a river Now, here are some guided reading questions. Find and copy a word that means the same as cried. Okay, so I, I think it's at the beginning of the chapter. Find two phrases that tell us the old grandmother was hungry. How are Rosie and Jim's desires and wishes similar? Do you believe Rosie when she tells Jim she was dismissed from her previous job because she couldn't cook? Emily and Lizzie have been taken away by a kind old lady to the countryside. Do you think this is true? In what ways is Rosie's story about Emily and Lizzie similar to a fairy tale? Okay, now I'm going to pause the slide so that you can write your answers neatly. Think about, you can go back on the slides, find the answers and then write them down.
Okay, now let's discuss the answers. Now, another word for cried is sobbed. So he sobbed himself to sleep. That means he was crying, remembering his mother. And whilst crying, he drifted into uh, sleeping. So he slept whilst he was sobbing. She nodded towards the half-eaten toast that was sticking out of Jim's pocket, stretched out her clawed hand and like a greedy bird, she pecked and waited. So this shows that the grandma in the chapter was very hungry. Now, how was Rosie and Jim's situation quite uh, similar? How were, uh, what desires, what kind of desires did they have? So th they both are unhappy about their situation and they both want freedom. So here Rosie is not happy where she is living and even Jim is not happy at his situation. So they both, in a way, both are in a similar situation and they both want freedom. Next one. Uh, yes, because Jim had tried her bread and it was bad. <clears throat> and that was the reason that she was uh, dismissed from her uh, job because she couldn't uh, cook good bread. The next answer is yes. And the next one, it is very similar to a fairy tale because they were rescued by a kind old lady given beautiful dresses and were taken in beautiful carriages drawn by four white horses. So Emily and Lizzie's situation is very similar to a fairy tale because they both were rescued like how it happens in fairy tales. Like for example, in Cinderella, uh, she was rescued by the kind prince. Okay, so same way, even Emily and Lizzie were rescued by this kind old lady and there is a carriage and horses. So all these uh, features, you find them in fairy tales. Now task, you are now going to write a persuasive letter to tip to escape from the workhouse. So your task now is that you're going to write a short letter to tip. You know, tip was uh, Jim's friend in the workhouse. So you are going to write a letter to him, uh, persuading him to escape from the workhouse. So now Jim has already escaped and he wants his friend to be uh, to come to where he is now. So he, uh, he is going to write a letter to Tim to escape from the workhouse. Now, uh, you know the format of an informal letter. So the address goes at the top. OK, now whose address are you going to write? Jim's address. OK. So you're going to write uh, Jim's address. So where is he right now living uh, along with Rosie? OK, then you're going to write the date underneath. Then you have your salutation or your greeting. So dear tip. OK, now you need to have at least four paragraphs in your letter. Now many children, they are doing the homework, but I'm finding that, you know, it's quite short and the task is not very detailed. So you need to have at least four paragraphs in your letter. So the first should be the introduction where you say, um, hello, dear tip. So that's the greeting. And then you say, how are you? And I'm very well, thank you. Uh, I'm very well here. And um, I'm very happy in this place. I managed to find Rosie and she's taken good care of me. She's giving me good food to, food to eat. Then in the second paragraph, you can say how you escaped. So you can say that whilst the carpet beaters were busy, I managed to come out of the workhouse and I uh, landed in the streets of London. And then what happened next with Jim? Then in the third paragraph, you're going to persuade Tip to escape. So you have to convince him that, you know, it's not good living in the workhouse. It's a miserable situation. Uh, outside, there's a lot of freedom. You can eat whatever you want. You can, uh, you know, roam freely on the streets. So you can, you have to persuade Tip to escape. And then the fourth paragraph is the summary. What adventure you're going to do and where to meet Tip. So in this last paragraph, you can say that, uh, you know, we, you and me, both of us can live together and, uh, you know, we'll have a lot of fun. What will we do together? And then you can also decide on a meeting place with tips there. So you can say that I can meet you by, by the river. But once you escape, come to this place where there is this river and I live in the shed next to the river. So you can meet me there. OK, so you need to have these four paragraphs in your letter. And then in the end, you have your 
uh, you know you have your uh, last ending line where it says from Jim okay so uh, may see that you write the letter properly now there are a few tips which I'll show you on the next slide so that you can make your letter interesting some persuasive words and phrases okay some words and phrases that you can use are it is my belief that as you can see without a doubt for this reason I'm sure okay so you can use all of these uh, in fact I, in your letters I want to see all of these five phrases in your letter it is my belief that uh, living in the workhouse is is not good as you can see that I have managed to escape and I'm happy without a doubt living in the workhouse is not good for um, any person so use these phrases and try to make your letter as interesting as possible okay you have to persuade tip so that when tip actually reads the letter he is convinced that okay I have to escape from the workhouse now here are some other words that can help you think escape should not workhouse because and might okay so write a nice long letter I don't want very short letters write a nice long letter at least four paragraphs I want to see at least one whole page one A4 page filled up with uh, uh, with proper detailed writing okay good luck for the task and I'll see you tomorrow bye bye